Hi, do you want to make your Wolf River coil easier and faster to deploy? Do you want to speed up the amount of time it takes to switch from one band to another? And do you want to learn how to make it a true quarter wave resonant antenna on 20 meters through 6 meters without needing a coil, meaning you're not going to lose any power inside of a coil or a tuner? Then stick around. Hi everyone, my name is Dale, Whiskey Zero Delta Hotel Zulu. Today I want to show you how I've set up my Wolf River Coil SB1000 for portable operations, um, activations for POTA and things like that, so that I can deploy this very quickly um, in a way that it performs the best. Um, one, of the, one of my best antennas uh, for portable operations is the uh, DX Commander. I love the DX Commander because it is an all band vertical antenna and I can quickly switch from one band to another. Um, one of the things when, I've, when I initially got my uh, Wolf River coil is you're stuck with one band and in order to go to another band you have to uh, go out and adjust the antenna to tune it. Um, so that kept me kind of pushing me back towards my DX Commander. What I didn't like about the DX Commander is it takes so long to set up. Um, not that I can't set it up in about 20 minutes, but it takes 20 minutes to set up, 20 minutes to tear down, and I can set up my Wolf River coil in a much quicker time frame. So what I did is I set out to try to figure out how can I make uh, my Wolf River coil much quicker to deploy um, and get, get on the radio, get on the air. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through a couple, a uh, couple of the things that I've done uh, to make this work much better. The first thing we should do is we should talk a little bit about um, what uh, type of antenna we're going to try to set up. Um, and to do that, let's start with looking at some of the Wolf River Coil kits that uh, the, the default kits. The default kits come with a 102 inch uh, whip antenna. Um, and this is, you know, when I first got it, I just went with the default. This is what I what I got. And I'm gonna, when, in a minute, I'm gonna walk you through some of the different bands and the antenna lengths um, so that you can see why this might not be the best uh, whip to go with. Um, what I've since done is I purchased a 213 inch uh, whip antenna. This is a $50 add-on um, if you've already bought the $102 whip or the kit with the 102 uh, inch whip, sorry. Um, but you can add this on for $50. Um, if you haven't bought a Wolf, Wolf River coil yet, you can purchase um, the kits with the 213 inch whip antenna. And I would strongly recommend that that's the one that you get. What this is gonna allow you to do is, and you'll see as I mentioned when I look at the tuning chart here in a minute, this will allow us to run uh, 20, 17, 15, um, uh, 12, 10, and even six in a quarter wavelength vertical without having to use the tuning coil. If you go with the 102 inch whip, um, you're gonna have to use the tuning coil in order to tune up those frequencies. And by using the 213 inch whip, uh, we can, like I said, do 20 all the way up to six without having to touch the tuning coil. And that right there is gonna save us a lot of time. The next thing I wanna talk about a little bit is the, uh, the coil that comes with the Wolf River Coil's take it along setup. Um, the default coil that comes with the, with the package um, is the standard coil. The standard coil um, is only rated for 100 watts uh, single sideband and 20 watts digital. And this is a detail that a lot of people miss or they see the 100 watts for uh, the SSB mode and they just kind of go with it being 100 watts. And the problem with this standard is you can see that it's kind of made with PVC material. And if you're trying to do anything over 20 watts um, of uh, digital mode and using the coil, meaning you're using the coil to tune, um, you will start to heat this thing up. And there's some great pictures online of people that have melted uh, their coil and it's bent over and fallen over. The Platinum model, if you look closely, is actually made out of a, uh, instead of the PVC material, it's made out of a fiberglass. It looks like a fiberglass type material. And this coil is rated for 500 watts single sideband and 100 watts digital. So if you plan on doing any digital modes, um, make sure that you're purchasing the version uh, that comes with the Platinum coil. Before we get into the tuning portion, um, one thing I wanna talk a little bit about is the importance of radials with the Wolf River coil. Um, the Wolf River coil does ship with three radials. 
Um, and as you can see here, I've got much more than three. Um, I'm, please look at my other video that I have. Um, I'll link it in the comments below and I'll also uh, pop a note in here. Um, please watch that video to, to learn a little bit more about the importance of radials. Um, what I'm gonna do here moving forward with the tuning is I'm moving forward with 24 33 foot uh, radials. And I know that might seem like a lot and, uh, and people might uh, kind of wonder why I have so many. Um, but if you, you know, when we get to the end here and you kind of see the SWRs um, that I'm able to achieve, and if you watch the other video, you'll kind of understand why I've landed at uh, 24, 33 foots. Um, what I've done with my radials is I have uh, brought them into six per bundle and put them into an Anderson power pole. And my Anderson power poles I have permanently connected to my legs. So that uh, again, for fast deployment, I can just quickly throw my uh, throw the base up, um, roll out the verti verticals, and plug them in, and then I'm up and running. Um, the other thing you'll notice, I do have some ferrites on the uh, my feed line coming into the antenna. Um, that does also help a little bit um, with SWR, very minimal, um, but it is there. Um, it you know I probably wouldn't tell the difference with it on or off, um, but I have just been leaving those on, so uh, that's why you see those there. All right, the next thing we have to do before we uh, get to tuning is we've got to get the collar in the right position. Remember what I had mentioned is, you know, we're really using this 213 inch whip so that we can get to a resonant uh, length of the, of the antenna element without needing any loading. We don't want to use any of the coil at all. So let me show you how I do that. Um, you know, it's kind of hard with the clicks to really try to get it to that highest point where you're not really using any clicks at all. So what I do is I'll go just to the side, if you notice um, where this first wire comes out in the coil. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna turn the collar so that the clip slides right into that versus trying to slide it down and hope I get it in that first, um, first position. By just doing it that way, by just turning it and catching that first position, I make sure that I am as high as possible up into that, uh, um, up into the coil and I'm not uh, too far down. Cause I wanna catch that wire right as it goes in and goes up and try to get no loading at all. So once you get it into that position in that very first position, then we can move on with tuning the antenna. Okay, let's talk a little bit about uh, the tuning chart that I referenced earlier. Um, this is a chart that I put together to help you uh, tune this. And again, the goal here that we're working towards is we are really gonna try to um, get quarter wavelength um, antenna lengths on each one of these bands. Um, this is something that Callum does on the DX Commander. And uh, the quarter wavelength, is a, it's a great, um, a, a great size for DX as it has kind of that low takeoff angle. Um, so, you know, you're, you're gonna be able to get your signal way out there. Uh, one issue with that though, is it does create a little bit bigger skip zone, um, you know, than an antenna that might have a little bit higher uh, takeoff angle. Um, you may notice that, you may not. Um, it's gonna depend a lot on the terrain um, that you're operating in as well. So again, my goal is I want quarter wavelengths and I wanna try to avoid using the, uh, the tuning coil at all, I don't wanna use it. In fact, you might wonder why, why am I even you know, using the Wolf River coil if I'm trying to get a, um, a, a quarter wavelength and not use the coil at all? And that's a great question. Um, I actually like that the, uh, the coil does provide a little bit more weight down at the base um, so that I am able to use that and when, um, you know, to make the tripod a little bit more stable. Um, so even if I'm not using the coil for tuning, it does still make a little bit uh, sturdier antenna. Also, even though it's not listed on here, um, if I do want to go to 40, um, it is very easy to, to transition to 40 as well. So by having the coil there, um, if I want to make that jump, I can make that jump to 40. So uh, here's the, the tuning chart that I was referencing. Um, this uh, you can see has 2017, 15, 12, 10, and six. Um, each of these bands, these six bands are all tunable to quarter wavelength without using the coil. Again, as long as you have the 213 inch whip antenna. So what I've done here is uh, listed kind of the high end, the low end, kind of my target resonance. Um, what I was really doing here is I was just shooting right for the middle of the band. 
Um, I will put a link in the comments below for this spreadsheet. So feel free to download the spreadsheet. And if you want, all, you can get at all the formulas then, you can update your target resonance. Um, but ultimately, you know, your target resonance, to be honest, is just gonna be a rounding error anyway. Um, and you'll see that as we kind of move to, you know, watching it with the uh, antenna analyzer. So each of these, um, if you jump over here to the quarter wavelength in centimeters, I find it a lot easier to do antenna math in centimeters versus inches. Um, so I try to work, um, work in centimeters. Um, I did pick up a, uh, a tape measure that has both metric um, as well as uh, uh, the normal imperial inches on it as well. And this works out really well um, when you're working with antennas, trying to either cut wires um, or set your uh, whip antenna lengths. Um, and you'll see me using this here in a little bit, and I will put a link in the comments below on um, this one. I got this off Amazon. It really was not that expensive. Okay, and then one of the last thing I want to point out here is I have just written into here um, the difference in the lengths between the 20 meter, the 17, the 15, the 12, the 10, and the 6. And I'm going to be using those differences here in a little bit. You'll see when we are trying to find where those other, uh, other ranges are. So having uh, kind of gone through all this, um, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go and we're going to take that 213 inch whip and we're going to take that 20 meter and we're going to try to get it to that quarter wavelength of 487.8 centimeters. Okay, now that we know that the uh, total length of the antenna has to be 487 centimeters for 20 meters, um, the next thing we have to do is we, we can't forget to account for the coil and also the, uh, the hookup wire uh, that goes up to the collar. So what we need to do is we need to measure that to see how long that is. And uh, if we're looking again at centimeters, um, 40 centimeters is right about here. And so we are, you know, I'm going a little bit high because of the collar. There's also a little extra wire in there. Um, so it, you know, depending on how much wire you have, your setup, it could be somewhere between 40 and uh, 45 centimeters additional to account for the coil and the wire. So when we go to now measure the whip, we are gonna uh, uh, basically take out 40 centimeters um, from that 487 and we should shoot for about 447 centimeters. Okay, so knowing that for 20 meters, we're gonna need an element that is about 487 centimeters and then taking into account that the coil with the uh, hookup wire is about 40 centimeters. So if we subtract that, uh, we're gonna end up with about 447. So let's run on down the line. And what I've done is I have adjusted the whip so that it is about 447 centimeters. Actually 448, uh, but I, I counted the screw is actually gonna go into that other hardware. So I left that extra centimeter. So now that we've measured the whip, um, we can take in the whip is 447 plus the 40, 487 centimeters. Um, now that we've got a measure, we can take the whip and put it up onto the coil. Now I'm gonna lift this and do this this way, um, but one thing to point that I wanna point out is um, people uh, complain about these um, uh, telescoping whips not holding um, and loosening up over time. And this is one of the worst ways uh, to kind of uh, um, accelerate the wear on these is by picking them up like this um, when they're fully extended. When they bend and they bend on these uh, joints, um, that's what's gonna loosen those up. Uh, but doing it once isn't really gonna be too much of a problem. Um, but from that point on, you know, when you go to put these up, uh, put them on the coil first and then uh, raise the antenna from there. All right, now we're gonna jump over to the uh, rig expert. Um, this is the, uh, the stick version. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, go in and take a peek at where 20 meters comes in. And uh, look at that, it's uh, 1.02 at 14.230. So that's a little, uh, might be a little high in the band. Um, you know, for the for the 14.2, what I'm going to do is I'm or I'm sorry for the uh, 1.02. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, PC version of Antscope here, 
and uh, we're going to take a look at it that way. Okay, so now I've got the uh, Antscope software set up with my Rig Expert. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, jump in here and I'm going to go from, uh, I'm going to sweep from, we'll say 13900, so I'm just a little bit below the band, and I'm going to go up to uh, 14450, so I go a little bit over the band, uh, the end of the, the 20 meter band. And then I'm also going to do 250 points. That's, that's way more than you really need, um, but it'll be real high resolution. So let's do a sweep and look at that. Um, so now if I take a peek at this with my, uh, with my mouse here, I'm 1.14 at, uh, at 13 or 14,350. And I am uh, 1.18 at uh, 1403. Um, that is phenomenal. Um, and it looks like at the lowest, um, you know, 1.05. Um, that's some great, uh, great bandwidth across there. We've got, we can do that whole, the whole range of the band there. Um, and if you notice the math sort of magically worked there, right? Um, we kind of estimated the 40 centimeters of the coil. We measured the length of the whip. And if we go back to our band chart, um, you know, we were pretty much like right on the money. Um, you know, we didn't really have to adjust it much. I, I don't know that it would really do any good to adjust this. Um, you know, this is, this is phenomenal. And remember, what we have right now is we've got a 20 meter totally resonant antenna, right? Um, you know, 1.15 and lower through the, you know, that's the highest it is on the ends of the band. Um, that's a great tune right there. Um, so we're good with this. Now let's go market and I'll show you um, how we make this easy and sustainable going forward. All right, so now that we know that this is um, perfect, where 20 is tuned perfectly, um, we, you know, we've only pulled out the top sections um, first. So, you know, we still have another section um, down there. And then of course, you know, the main section. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take a Sharpie and we're gonna mark this so that we know now where 20 meters is. And once you mark this, um, you can come back later and set this antenna up and just pop it out, go right to this mark, and you are good to go. You will not have to, uh, you probably won't even, you can just use the, the SWR meter in your rig uh, to figure out where 20 is and you'll be all set. All right, so now that we got 20 set, let's go, let's start setting about uh, tuning this for all of the other bands as well. All right, so I'm going back to my band chart uh, my tuning chart, and I had figured out that to go from 20 to 17, we should go down about 100 centimeters um, in the antenna length. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my, my uh, tape measure and I'm gonna go up 100 centimeters. And now we're not gonna be quite as accurate as we were that first time, um, but I'm gonna put that up there and I'm gonna kinda eyeball where I need that thing to come down. And this one's gonna be tough because it is so high up. Um, but I'm just kind of eyeballing it and I'm going to collapse it down. Now, that was a total guess, but it's, you know, roughly hundred meters. Let's go back to the, uh, to Antscope and we'll see where we're at. Okay. So now I've got Antscope to go from, uh, what did I do? 17, 649 to 18. I kind of goofed that up. Let me try that again here. 18, let's go to 250 just so I want a little bit of each end of the band. And uh, I'm gonna start at uh, 17,750. Uh, actually, let's do 17,700. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for this gray bar here. That's the 17 meter band. Um, and as you can see, this is pretty, pretty accurate already. We're like 1.39, um, we're 1.3 on the low end, 1.42 on the high end, if you look down here. But you can see that the, the resonant part of the band is still over to the left. Um, so if I want to make, if I want to slide that up, what I need to do is actually shorten the antenna. Um, so let's go back out and shorten the antenna and see uh, what, what kind of difference we can make. Okay, so because we were um, a little low, the resonant, uh, 
the resonance was a little low. What we are gonna do to move that up is we are actually gonna bring the antenna, we're shortening it, we're gonna bring it down. Now, this is where kind of, you know, just a little experimentation um, is gonna come in. I'm usually kind of go about a fist at a time, but it looked like we were pretty resonant, fairly low. So I'm gonna go maybe like a fist and a half, and I'm gonna bring that down. And let's go back and see what Antscope says. All right, so I brought it down uh, another fist and a half. Um, let's do another scan here. And look at that. So what we're doing here is we're looking at the red line. And if you notice that it's a little higher now on this side, because what we've done is we've, we've moved the dip um, farther over here um, to the right. And it looks like, again, we're down at like 1.09 um, on this thing, um, on that high end. On the low end, we're at about a 1.2. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna raise that up just a tad bit and see if we can't slide that 1.9 over. All right, so I just, uh, I just brought that up just ever so slightly, maybe another inch, and I'm gonna scan it again. And now we're getting, it looks like it's another red line. So it's kind of hard to see, but this one is the one that is selected, this number four down here. So if I come back over here and look, now I'm 1.08 and 1.06. And I'll tell you what, that's, that's probably the best we're gonna get. Um, you know, there's always gonna be a little margin of error when you're bringing that thing up and down. Um, but bottom line, we're, we're under 1.1. Um, we are super resonant on, on, uh, on 17 meters now. So let's go mark that and then we'll figure out the next, uh, the next band. All right, so now I'm gonna mark where 17 is. And now that we've got that marked, let's get set up for 15. So to go to 15 meters, according to the band chart, uh, we're gonna need to go about 70 centimeters shorter. So again, I'm gonna get my, uh, my tape measure out and I'm gonna go try to find about 70. I'm gonna kinda eyeball right about where that is and I'm gonna bring that down and I'm gonna set it right there. And let's go see where we are on uh, 15 now. All right, so now we're looking at 17, and uh, we've got it dialed in just a little bit below uh, the band and a little bit above the band, and we are gonna scan. And now it looks like our resonant uh, spot is a little bit high. Um, so what we're gonna wanna do on this is we are gonna wanna bring, uh, we're gonna actually wanna make the antenna a little bit longer to bring the resonant point down. So I'm gonna run out there and do that quick. I'll be right back. All right, so now I've uh, brought it up about a, another, you know, about a fist again. Um, and let's do another scan and see what, uh, what it looks like. And we're definitely lower on that left-hand side, um, but we do, the, the most resonant point is still kind of at the high end of the band. It's at 1.08. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go bring it up about another uh, maybe three quarters of a, of a hand and we'll see where we're at on that. All right, and uh, here we go. Hopefully this is the last time. Let's do another scan. Now we're looking at the green line and boom, that looks pretty good. We're talking uh, 1.17 on that end, 1.19 on that end. So uh, it looks like we've got it really balanced out on 15. So let's go mark 15 now, and then we're gonna go to 12. All right, so we're marking 15. And let's go find 12. So from 15 to 12, we got to go down about 50 centimeters. So notice we're getting a little shorter um, each time we're going down. So 50 centimeters is not far to travel. So it looks like we're going right about there. 
So we're gonna bring it to there and let's go see how we're doing. All right, here we go on 12 meters. First pass. <laughs> I don't know that we, uh, I mean, that's pretty great right there. We got 1.5 to 1.7. That's a you know great first pass, um, but it does definitely look lower over to the left. So again, to slide the resonant point up, we need to uh, make the antenna shorter um, to get it to slide that way. So it looks like the dip is still to the left. So let me go uh, shorten it up a little bit. All right, so I slid it up, um, you know, about two or three fingers. Let's try it again. I'm on the green line now and it's definitely better. We're looking at about 1.13, 1.17. But if I look over here, I got some 1.07 and, and I know I should just probably stop and, and it's gonna be a rounding error, but uh, I'm gonna just go shorten that thing just a little bit more and see if we can't drop it. All right, I did a couple more shortening exercises there and let's do one last sweep. And now we're at the red line down there and look at that. We're talking 1.07 on the low end, 1.06 on the high end. Um, that doesn't get any better than that. Um, that's, uh, that's perfectly tuned on, on 12 meters now. So let's go mark 12 meters and move to 10 meters. Yep. All right, so marking 12. When you mark these, uh, just kind of get them good and then what I usually do is once I get them all tuned up, what I'll do is I'll come back later and uh, on a table where I can lay these out flat and I can make those a little bit more prominent and potentially even write uh, the number in there so that I know which band it is. All right, so to go from 12 down to 10, it looks like we're going down about 39 centimeters, about 40 roughly. So I've got my uh, uh, tape out. Now we're, you know, we're going much shorter drops now. So I'm going from 40 uh, right up to about here, 39. So I'm gonna prop that down. And let's go see how we're doing on 10. All right, so now we're dialed in for uh, 10 meters, uh, 2800 to 29900. So we get a little bit of each end of the band. Let's do a sweep. And boy, that one looks, uh, well, we definitely bottomed out uh, over here. So we might just be we're a little bit high, we might wanna go a little bit lower, so we wanna maybe shorten it. But again, we're in that 1.09 range, which is perfect. So I'm gonna go out and just shorten it one little bit. All right, after lengthening it a few times on 10, um, very small uh, spots, let's do one more scan on it here. Um, this is the red line now. Um, I've got the resonant point um, pretty close to the center. Um, actually pretty much almost right on um, the band and at uh, 28.8 .8, I'm at 1.03 and uh, at the ends it's 1.3 and 1.2 so um, I got uh, I think I got 10 dialed in pretty tight as well um, you know the one point uh, you know 1.3 isn't isn't you know it's great right most people wouldn't complain about 1.3 um, but you know with all those other bands we were you know 1.1 1 .1 or less on 2017 and 12 and 15 we were at 1.17 so you know this one's a little high on the edges at 1.3 um, but still a pretty pretty amazing uh, pretty amazing uh, tune there so uh, let's go mark that one and then we're going to move on to six and then we'll be done all right so I'm going to mark 10 And now we're gonna go find six. Now, six is gonna be, um, we're right on the edge. Um, if you notice that six uh, on the band charts or on the uh, length chart that I put together, six meters is gonna need an antenna that's 52.8 inches. And if you, if you measure this, um, you know, we're gonna be, we're not gonna have much antenna on top of that coil. So we need to come down um, about a hundred and six centimeters from where we're at. So there is a hundred centimeters 
which pretty much, I know you probably can't see it on the camera, but it pretty much puts us almost right to the tip of uh, the antenna. So let's bring that down. And I think it's right to about there. And let's go see how we're doing on six. All right, this is my first pass at six here. And six is uh, not great. Even in our dip, we're at about a 1.46. On the high end, we're at about a 1.82. Now I can, you know, I'm going to be able to tweak this and maybe get that 1.4 a little bit towards the center. Uh, but to be honest, I don't think at this, at six meters for the Wolf River Coil and, and this whip, this particular whip, I'm not sure that this is, uh, you know, a great configuration for it. Um, if I measure this antenna, if I measure where I'm at right now, you know, I should be at about 40 or 52.8 inches. Um, for a quarter wavelength six meter antenna um, element and I'm a little bit short of that and what I think is happening is I think that the um, uh, I think that the uh, having all of the sections down in the bottom is probably adding maybe a little bit of a capacitance effect um, but bottom line I'm going to mark this anyway because I still think this is you know this is still usable on six meters um, I'm just not sure how, how great of a six meter antenna it is. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark it and uh, you know, we'll use it for six. Um, and, but uh, to be honest, like I said, I don't spend a ton of time down at six, I'd like to. Maybe as the cycle opens up a little bit and uh, the bands open up, six will be better. Um, and we'll see how it goes, but still definitely usable at six. Um, you know, just, just not as good as all the other bands. All the other bands we were, you know, we were well, even on the edges, well under 1.1, or I should say under 1.1 um, on three of the bands on the edges. We were 1.2, 1.17 on the edge of one, on 15 meters, and we were 1.3 on the edges of 10. So, you know, still great, uh, great results. Um, and six meters, I think it's just going to be kind of mediocre. All right, so let's take a look at how we did. Um, to be honest, I, I tweaked it just a little bit more and to <laughs> six meters is most resonant right there, right at the top of the tip. So if we just uh, know that, that six is there, um, and if we just start bringing it up, we go one section at a time. So that was six meters. There's 10 meters. There's 12 meters. When you're going up, you always want to make sure you lock in the section below it. There's 15 meters. There's 17 meters. And 20 meters. So now we can quickly uh, deploy and tune, get to the band we want to get to uh, very quickly, very easily, just by looking at those marks. Um, and again, you don't really need to bring an analyzer the next time or break it out the next time. Uh, you can just use the, the SWR meter in your, in your antenna, or I'm sorry, in your radio. All right, so there's one, that, that's got us 20 all the way down to six without having to use the coil, which is great because these are resonant antennas. And, and if we can try, or I should say they're resonant frequencies on this antenna, if we don't have to use the coil, we don't want to use the coil because we're just going to burn up some power um, in there. But there is one band, I know everybody's going to ask about it, and that is uh, 40 meters. How do we do 40 meters? And let me show you. All right, so to do 40 meters with the 213 inch uh, whip, we are gonna need the coil to do this. Um, but the first thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take this antenna and go all the way up as far as we can go. We want all the, the extent, all of the sections fully extended. Now, once we do that, we're gonna go down, we're gonna drop down to the coil. All right, so to finish tuning for 40, we put the mast all the way up and now what we have to do is we have to uh, come down in the, in the loading. Now, I didn't do the math um, to figure out exactly how many clicks and what the capacitance is. Um, so what I'm doing is 
um, I just did it trial and error and moved the ring down. And what I've found is that uh, 16 clicks, and if you leave that clip in the exact same spot and just go straight up and down, going 16 clicks will get you to 40 meters. So I'll do that now. Um, you gotta, you'll have to practice this. You have to kind of play with it a little bit um, because it's very easy to move too fast and slide through the clicks. So you just have to go one click at a time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and sixteen should get us uh, sixteen clicks should get us really close to forty meters. All right, so now that we've got the uh, we got the coil sixteen clicks down, uh, let's take a scan at uh, forty meters. And look at that. That's uh, not bad at all. Looks like we are 1.06 at 7.15. And we're 1.18 at the edge. We're a little high on this side. Um, 1.4 is still reasonable. Um, but, you know, to be honest, 1.07 is... Uh, you know, is great. I, I spend most of my time in SSB on seven on uh, 40 meters, kind of up in that phone band. So this is probably perfect. And if I wanted to tune for digital over here, still 1.3, great. Um, what I would do is I need to bring this down. So that means make the antenna longer. So I might try to come up um, to make the antenna longer. I might try to go one click up, which is going to reduce the number of I'm sorry, one click down, which is gonna add a little bit more capacitance. Or what I might try to do to fine tune it is I can just twist, uh, twist the uh, uh, collar on the, on the coil um, to kind of get like a half turn in there. Um, but 16 clicks, um, again, super fast. I just take the mast all the way up and do 16 clicks and I'm dialed in for 40. It's really important when you start uh, the tuning process to make sure you have kind of the radio field that you're going to use continuously going forward. As I mentioned, my radio field is 24, four bundles of six at 33 feet. Um, there can be a little bit of, uh, it can interact the, the size of your radio field with your tuning. And sometimes what it'll do is it can slide your, uh, you know, your point of resonance up or down a little bit. Um, depending on what your radial field looks like. So please make sure you try to get your radial field the way you're gonna use it um, consistently. And again, watch my video on radials so you can see a little bit about how to help get yourself to that right amount of radials. Another note about uh, tuning these. Um, when you tune this, um, I'm doing this here in my antenna proving grounds, uh, my backyard. Um, I'm gonna come up with one, uh, you know, where I feel it's resonant, where it looks resonant here. When you go to other locations, keep in mind obstacles around you, um, the ground, there's gonna be other things that are gonna interact with that. So this will get you to, you know, very close. Um, generally should be well enough for your, your radio's tuner to be able to deal with it. Um, but, uh, you know, don't be afraid to bring your meter along with you, your analyzer, so that you can uh, check, that, check that SWR and, and get it tuned in properly. Again, getting as close to 1.0 um, is going to help get the most amount of power out to that antenna. Um, and especially when you're talking QRP rigs, um, you want as much of the power hitting the antenna. So that's it. Uh, that's how I set up my Wolf River coil so that I can deploy, deploy it quickly, switch bands easily, uh, tear it down quickly, move on to my next park, and uh, do it all over again. I hope this helped. Um, if you like this video, please hit subscribe and like at the bottom. Uh, leave me some comments if you have any questions or um, anything that you found has worked well. And uh, also follow the link in the comments over to the blog post about this. And uh, feel free to continue the conversation there as well. Thanks for stopping by to watch this video. 7-3.